Okay. Okay, guys, we are live on Facebook. I'm just trying to get set up so that I can make sure everyone can see and hear us. All right. Eve. Okay, just checking with my technician. Okay. Everyone ready? Absolutely. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a wonderful, wonderful night where we will share out information to help you deal with mental, physical, and financial stress. Dr. James Strong and the Fountain of Life CDC presents The Breaking Point, How to Deal with Mental, Physical, and Financial Stress. And so before we get started, we're going to turn it over to our founder and pastor, Dr. James Strong, and he's going to give us some welcoming words, and we're going to dive right in so that we can hear from this wonderful, wonderful panel of experts. Dr. Strong? Thank you. Thank you, Evangelist Young. It's an honor and it's a privilege tonight to be able to uh, come on and talk to our listening audience uh, concerning some things that are very concerning to us at this point, uh, especially dealing with this COVID-19, um, dealing with the breaking point. And we realize so many are facing uh, some critical times right now and they're dealing with stress, physical stress, mental stress, financial stress. And we just wanted to come on and share with the people uh, some solutions uh, to the st stress problem they have at this time. We have a, a, a well-rounded panel tonight that is able to speak to those issues. And I certainly want to thank uh, them for being on tonight. And uh, let's just be open and enjoy uh, the panel on tonight and, and talk and get some help. Uh, God bless you, Sister Young. Okay, so before we get started, let me just give you all a few pointers of how this will go. Please, please, if you're on with us um, on our page, please host a watch party because we want to reach as many people as we can. So yes. host a watch party, share it with all your friends, share it on your personal pages. If you have business pages, ministry pages, share it out so that we can reach as many people as possible. Yes. Next, if you have questions that we are not um, asking our panelists, please put them in the comments. We have some awesome, awesome um, behind the scenes people who are taking those questions and we will answer about five of those live on air tonight. The other questions, we will get to them. Our panelists have agreed uh, to do videos for us and they will answer those questions. And at a later date, we will post those to our social media pages as well as our YouTube page. So please don't hesitate, put those questions in the comments and we will make sure that these experts that we have on tonight get to those questions. And yes. without further ado, I'm excited to hear because everyone needs that calm, that peace, and just that level of hope to know that we will get through all of the things that we're going through. So I'm excited <coughs> to introduce our panelists on tonight. Our first panelist, is Dr. Frederick Woods. He attended Merrillhurst Northwest Christian and Capella Universities. He has served throughout the states and abroad offering pastoral care, counseling services, and trainings. 
He's the founder and owner of 3C Empowerment, where he offers counseling, coaching, and consulting, and spiritual. He's a spiritual counselor for the Limestone County Hospice and Palliative Care Patients. We're going to begin, and I will introduce each panelist before they begin to speak. So welcome, Dr. Woods. We thank you for being on with us tonight, and we know that you're going to provide such um, wonderful insight for us on how to deal with mental stress during the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the racial um, injustice that we are facing today. So the first question that we have for you is, how can we be concerned but not consume with the pandemic and racial injustice? How can we could be concerned? Because we should be, but not let it consume us. How can we be concerned but not consume with the pandemic and racial injustice? Dr. Woods. Good evening and thank you, Evangelist Yan. And um, consume and with uh, the pandemic and racial injustice. Certainly we must be informed and remain informed and use wisdom. For the past few weeks, I've been looking at all the headlines about the ongoing acts of racism, police brutality, protests have trended in the news on social media. The stories along with those details have impacted uh, today's pandemic, have had a huge impact on the mental and emotional state of individuals at work and in home. For many Black Americans, these tragic headlines often lead to ongoing mental health issues. The expertise, uh, experts, they have a category that they call a racial trauma. Racial trauma, according to the marriage and family therapist, Dr. George James, is the physical and psychological impact and sometimes symptoms on people of color who have experienced racism. This includes seeing, hearing about the deaths just like we heard about the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and countless others. It also includes feeling the experiences of injustice every day in our everyday lives. So how do we? I'm going to look at, give you four ways of coping with of this racial trauma and, and aim at this exhausting news that we're dealing with on a daily basis. One would be recognize the personal impact of these stressors. Acknowledging it, owning it, recognizing it is there. On the mental um, level of it, you may experience races, racing thoughts, lack of concentration, internalized sense of racism, where you consciously, unconsciously accepting the ideals that white people are superior than black people. If you experience any of these symptoms, the good thing to do is journal. I'm not saying, hey, you gotta write down a whole lot, but just get a, get a paper and start journaling your thoughts, your feelings, just putting it down on paper. Doesn't have to be long. Other such symptoms as sadness, anger, fear, hopelessness, or numbness. Talking to your loved ones. You know, sometimes we just wanna keep it all to ourselves. You know, we don't want to talk, but talking is the best therapy there is. Talk therapy, psychotherapy, just getting it out. It takes the power out of it. It exposes it, it puts it out there. Talk to your loved ones. Um, be vulnerable. Talk to your spiritual mentors. Talk to your pastors. Talk to your um, uh, evangelists and, and ministers in your church. And physical reactions, it, sometimes we don't think about this, but when you're feeling your muscles are tense, your heart's racing, you're fatigued, you're having a lot of physical problems. Oftentimes it's a due to stress. Think mm. about stretching, exercising, moving around, eating healthy. Stress is serious. Stress will kill us. And sometimes again, we don't recognize it. We're feeling all these things and we just think, oh, oh it's my age or I'm just having, you know, I'm not exercising, what have you, but no, stress. But the next thing would be a meditate. Meditate and pray. Take some time to center yourself, to, to get into the moment, get into the present, kind of 
forgetting about everything that's going on around you and what's happening in the, uh, the media and the world and just kind of relax. I tend to find going to the park. I like outdoors. I'm from Oregon. I'm from the Pacific Northwest. So I like outdoors. I like to go outside and sit and enjoy the outside and just take that time to just relax, enjoy, look at God's beauty, but to meditate. And, it, and also you can do that with meditation. You can also do that with positive affirmations. You know, sometimes um, we have so much negativity we are consumed with. Something else that I've found that is helpful for me is I have a vision board. So my vision board is in my, uh, where I can see it every morning. So in the morning when I'm shaving, I'm, I'm saying, read positive affirmations and scriptures and feed my spirit. And so in prayer and prayer meditate, uh, meditate. And number three would be honest with others about how you feel. Sometimes we, especially us as people of color, we feel like we have to be these superheroes. I have to be the strong black woman. I have to be the strong black man. And, and just, and, and we operate and we go from day to day and, and, and just going through the motions. And then we'll tell somebody, well, I'm just tired or I'm just, you know, I have a lot going on, but not realize. And that's that underlying issue of everything that's going on. So just really trying to encourage you to be honest first with yourself on how you're feeling and what's going on. And again, that number one, talking to somebody about it, exposing it, putting it out there. The hard part is that sometimes people at work or anywhere, we really feel that, that like they don't really understand our, our experiences. And sometimes that's true. They may not. But then find someone that you can talk to. But be honest with yourself. Talk about your feelings. Um, when, again, I use myself. One thing I find is important is having mentors and coaches in your life. I've never gotten to the place like that, that I've arrived where I haven't had mentors in my life. I have a 74-year-old mentor, somebody that I can talk to. Because this is serious, what's happening right now. And number mm -hmm. one, and number four, and the last one, is take some time to unplug. Unplug. It's okay to have social media, but we need to unplug from social media. I would suggest unplugging from work, even taking some time off, taking a mental health day. And if you can't take that day, take an hour, take a few hours, but unplugging from social media, from the news, cell phones, all those things, where you bombarded with all of this negativity and all this stuff that's going on in the world right now. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Thank you. A lot you of what hear. you were saying, oh. thank you so much. A lot of what you were saying is so true. I'm a, I love to journal. And sometimes just seeing those things, writing those things down, it just gives you a release. And that meditation yes. and that prayer, it just kind of empties you of all the negative and just fills you back with the positivity. And so that's what you were saying. And you really answered um, one of your other questions was, what are some activities? You gave us those activities, journal, take time to yourself, just uh, step away from all of the news and the social media and the work and the stresses that those things bring, even if it's just for an hour. And so those are some things that we can do. Write it down, pray, talk to someone. Yeah. Make yes. sure you seek wise counsel. So you said your spiritual yes. leaders, your pastors, yes. your mentors, those right. people who can really help um, build your faith and bring back that hope. So thank you so much for Do that, Dr. Dr. Woods. Yes. At what point would you suggest someone may need some professional help? I was going to talk about that later on, but I can mention that now I have five things that if someone needed professional help, is these are the areas that you should recognize that you know that I need help. It causes significant distress in my life. Significant distress. We all go through things. We all have depression. We all have anxiety. You can't get rid of anxiety. We all get anxious. But when it stays there, when you're there for a period of time, for some days, then it's time to seek out some help and you yes. can't get past it. Nothing that you've done seems to have helped. Yeah. Everything you've been doing is just like, I'm still seeing overwhelmed and consumed with all of this. 
and it's taken me. Um, your friends or your family that you've been talking to, mm -hmm. they feel like they're tired of listening. Right. They, you know, it's time to seek out some professional help. That's good. That's good. That's good. And when you start um, overusing or abusing something or somebody else. That's okay. great. That's great. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, uh, Benjamin. And so one of the other questions that we have for you also, Dr. Woods, is discuss the effects uh, that being sheltered in place. We talked about the racial injustice, but we're also dealing with the pandemic on top of all of this, uh, something that I've never experienced and, and most people living now have never experienced anything like this. So would you talk about the effects that being sheltered in um, how the, the effect that that could have on people and how do we handle that? Uh, yeah. That we have to be inside, you know, as yeah. much as possible. How do we handle that? Yeah, this pandemic has caused an awful lot of stress amongst many people. Not just the stress, but fear. Fear and increasing anxiety about this new disease. Um, and we're overwhelmed. Public health actions such as social distancing can make people feel isolated, mm. lonely, increase stress and anxiety. I have some elderly patients that I'm dealing with now that they're going through a real hard, difficult, difficult time being lonely. Fear and worry about your own health and health of your loved ones, your financial situations, your jobs, support services you rely on with all the new uncharted areas you're facing. For the um, it's a, you know this is an area that um, you know with all this going on in this um, situation that individuals need to more so look at what can we do the changes that we can make and and then and being by ourselves you know you're by yourself but then we're a lot of people a lot of churches have been using um, the internet now and online. And we don't think, you know, we hadn't thought about it as much before. But mm. yes, you're socially distancing. But you know what? You can go online and connect with somebody just like we're doing tonight. I, we're amen. Connected. Absolutely. And, and, and then picking up the phone. Yes. Picking up the phone, calling some people, checking on some individuals, you know. Right. Young people have already been using social media and technology. So we can start, like, reaching out to individuals. Even yes. sometimes or even drive by. You know, you may not have to get close together, but just drive by and do a wave. I've been seeing on social media how people have been going by celebrating graduations and birthdays and those kind of things. Yes. Um, you know, those things are important because we have to, we are social beings. And it's important that, you know, that we get together and, um, you know, try to connect with one another. That's wonderful. You, you know, so this question was discussed effects of people being sheltered and how it can be assisted with handling mental stress. Some activities, some of the activities that I would suggest in that area, changes are, because um, we end up having change in our sleep habits and all those things. But I encourage people to then start looking at doing some things differently. You know, looking at activities to do. It's fun things. My wife and I, we've taken more walks. We've taken, looked at going to the park. Just the, mm. last week, we was on the swing. We went to the arcade, did some different things to just try to have some fun and enjoy life. You yes. know, life doesn't stop. Absolutely. And, um, and I encourage people definitely to get outside. <laughs> the other thing is where it's important that we get vitamin D. And we're, a lot of people are just staying inside and that's kind of not the good, the best thing because it's dark, it's dreary, but just kind of getting outside more. That's good, that's good. Yes, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Woods. I hope that you guys are taking notes. Um, you can always come back and watch this again later, but we have gotten off to an excellent start. I know even for me, just some of the extra things that he uh, told us to do, those are things that I will be trying because, you know, I don't like to just be in the house all the time. So things that you could do inside uh, mm. to just relieve that stress, 
do those things. Write these things down, guys. These are experts in their field. So they are giving you sound advice. Please uh -huh. take yeah. the advice okay. on tonight yeah. and do that. Uh, do those things. We started this webinar and this Facebook Live so that we could help. We can Amen. help those people who may be silently struggling. So you have a platform now to receive help without ever having to um, go outside of your home. It is right here for you. So please take advantage of it. Please take advantage of all of this wonderful advice. Thank you so much, Dr. Woods. And we will be coming back because I'm sure some people will be posting questions on the comments. And so we will come back uh, to you at a later time. Um, next. We're going to move on to our next panelist. Again, another qualified panelist. And this panelist is going to talk about the physical stress. And her name is Rochelle Hendricks. She is a senior territory manager for a pharmaceutical and a pharmaceutical representative in Huntsville, Alabama. She practiced as a family and OBGYN nurse practitioner. So she is a nurse practitioner. She currently uh, she is currently on the advisory board at the UAH College of Nursing, where she was the faculty and advisor to the local and state Alabama Association of Nursing Students. So once again, a well, more than capable individual to give us information about how to handle physical stress during these untrying and un untrying times. So thank you, Nurse Hendricks, for being with us on tonight. And your first question, I'm gonna jump right into it, is COVID-19 and racial injustice has affected the lives of people and it has contributed to the stress of, of our everyday lives. Discuss the effects that these issues have and how can adults be assisted with handling physical stress? How can they be assisted with handling physical stress? Welcome, Nurse Hendricks. Unmute yourself. All righty, there we are. Thank you. <laughs> I am so glad to be here tonight. Thank you, uh, Young, and uh, to everyone out there. I want to say hello to our other panelists. Thank you so much for being with us tonight as well. And so when you talk about physical stress, um, you can't um, help but wonder um, when people are dealing with emotional and um, whether it's racial tension or whether they're scared that they're going to get COVID-19, um, your, your physical body reacts, okay? You think about that fight or flight syndrome, think about the bear. You're meeting the bear in the woods. What happens? You freak and you can imagine like a cat, when a cat gets scared and their hair goes up everywhere, people who live a, a stressful life those people are actually walking around chronically like that eked out cat. You don't see those uh, hairs standing out, but on the inside, their body mm -hmm. is like that eked out cat all the time. Mm -hmm. What's happening there is the increase in cortisol levels. God really created us so that that fight or flight would be short swift, get you away from the bear, get you out of the scary situation. Not for you to walk around like that all the time. So mm. we have to find ways to calm ourselves or get into a better position where your cortisol levels come back down to, to normal. Uh, when it comes to cortisol, it can raise your blood sugar and it can raise your blood pressure. Those are two of the biggest things that cause us to have issues with COVID-19 as minorities or African-Americans in particular. Um, so that's one of the reasons why when, when, when Dr. Woods was talking about uh, all the things that we can do to calm ourselves and to keep ourselves in a good uh, mental place, listen and take notes and come back to it because our bodies respond. When you have too much cortisone in your body, you can't sleep at night. When you have to, when you don't sleep, your blood sugar goes up. Mm. When you don't sleep, your belly gets bigger because cortisol levels rise and cortisol makes you hungry. So you find yourself rage, uh, raging the refrigerator. 
ravaging the refrigerator. And you wonder, why do I keep eating so much? Why am I so hungry? Your levels of, of cortisol, the stress hormone, when those are high, blood pressure, blood sugar, everything's high. So we need to come down to a place where we can um, calm ourselves and we can focus on those things that are good from a scriptural standpoint. And I, and, and I um, will have to say this, if we listen to the word of God, he told us what to do. Uh, Philippians 4, where he talks about uh, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. He's telling us not to focus on what I've seen called uh, doom scrolling. And I'm guilty, I'm guilty as charged. And when I go on my phone, sometimes I'm reading about what they call the Karens out there. And then when I see people that look like they fit that, um, that I guess that description, I'm looking at them kind of funny, like, are you going to do something to me now? Like the lady that called the, um, called the police on the other person, that's almost like PTSD. You, you get nervous and that's not what we're supposed to be focusing on. We're supposed to focus on things that are good, things that are a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So keep that in mind when you find yourself um, down and out or depressed. What have you been thinking about? What have you been reading? What have you been watching? How many uh, bad stories can we take in one day? I would say cut that off sometimes and go to something positive, okay? Now, when it comes to what we can do for ourselves, we need to know our body. We need to know um, certain numbers, okay? As a nurse, as a nurse practitioner, I will tell you, know what your blood pressure is, okay? Don't be surprised when you go into the doctor or when you get your blood pressure checked and it's elevated. You have um, a responsibility for this temple that you have. Normal blood pressure range, 120 over 80 or lower. Um, it can range a little bit above that, but if it's getting into the 140 over 90 and above, that's too high. What happens is that your heart is beating against this excess pressure and your heart muscle begins to get flaccid. It's just like a rubber band that you have stretched and stretched. And that's what your heart is doing if your blood pressure is high. So we can know our blood pressure. We can take our blood pressure medicine. And when we don't feel bad, we still take our medication because what you're doing is, although you feel well, you're making your heart work over time. So then you find out that uh, your heart has decided, you know, I'm like this rubber band and I've just given up. So now you're dealing with heart failure, if you've heard of it. Um, the problems with blood pressure, heart failure, diabetes, those are the problems that COVID is taking people out with, okay? So that's the reason why um, if we take responsibility for ourselves, if we take care of ourselves, then we don't have as many um, medical issues that we're dealing with. Um, I don't blame people who can't get to the doctor for not going, but I will say that um, if you have an appointment, keep your appointment. Um, don't give away your power. Don't you know? Uh, not buy your medication because your grandchild wanted that new game. It's very important. Prioritize yourself and make sure that you are um, doing your part. Um, one thing I will mention, and I did bring this up to the attention of uh, some of our panelists, people that have uh, COVID or any other kind of respiratory condition, if you've even been to the emergency room, you've had your um, O2 saturation monitor. This is a little O2 saturation monitor that I got from Walmart. 20 bucks, okay? There are several of these out there that may be a little more expensive or close to that. What does this do? It tells me whether I'm getting enough oxygen to my tissues, my lungs, my brain, all throughout my body. And um, if you are wondering, is this sniffling and tightness or 
is this problem um, causing me real serious problems? Something just like this, the normal range, anywhere from 95 to 100, know your number. Where are you normally? If you have asthma or you have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or emphysema, you may be a little bit lower than that. Your doctor or your nurse practitioner should know that. But it's gonna cause more anxiety if you start coughing and you think, uh-oh, it's COVID versus, okay, let's see where, where how, how is the oxygen perfusing in my body? I've got a good 98 on here. That's pretty good. So, you know, that's gonna help me when, it's, when I'm trying to decide if my allergies are really the problem or if I'm having oxygen trouble. People that have died with COVID, a lot of them have died because their oxygen levels were dropping because that's one of the places where COVID really attacks. It attacks a lot of parts of the body with blood clots and all kinds of things, but the lungs can get uh, the consistency of the inside of a pomegranate in terms of blood clots throughout the body with COVID. And you're not, you're not oxygenating your tissues. And by the time they drag into the ER, their O2 saturation is down in the 50s. That means that they could not make it. They may have to go straight onto a ventilator. Whereas if they knew that they were starting to decline, work with your healthcare provider, let them know that you're thinking about keeping up with your O2 saturation. And there will be a link at the end of this provided for how you can order that and how you can understand what it's doing. Um, but make sure you work and promise me you're going to make sure you work with your health care provider. Don't call them and tell them that you need to go to the ER. Just let them know what your numbers are. And then you make that decision together. Okay. Based Thank on that you. information, I'm going to stop right there to see if we have any questions or anything else I can help you with. Thank you so much, uh, Nurse Hendricks. Once again, information. We hear so much when you watch the news and when you're on social media, everyone has become a doctor, everyone has become a counselor, you know, and we're gonna have an attorney, everyone has become an attorney, but we have actual <laughs> certified um, experts in this area. So this yes. information that they're giving is the information you want to receive. You don't want to be on Facebook looking exactly. at, you know, someone who Google searched you, you know, what COVID symptoms are. They are here. They're telling you the things that you need to look out for. And one thing that I noticed that she said is take care of yourself before COVID. And if you didn't before, you know, pre-COVID, now is the time to start. If you have those doctor's appointments, go. Don't, she said, Absolutely. don't cancel those appointments. If you can get there, get there. And that way you are staying on top of whether it's allergies or whether you have a serious concern. Um, if you would, Nurse Hendricks, before we move on, could you just um, address it, um, how it's harder on African-Americans, uh, not just from the high blood pressure and diabetes, but how us taking care of ourselves, how it's harder on us, um, how it's harder on us to handle COVID-19. If you'll just address that for us, please. Absolutely. Um, and I wanted to um, mention a couple of things. Number one, um, because when you're, if you're African-American, many of us are privileged, okay? I will acknowledge that, right? Many of us are privileged. We're privileged in terms of having a roof over our head. We're privileged in terms of having a job. We're privileged in terms of having a family, friends, and things like that. But a lot of ways we are um, in a situation where we are under chronic stress, and those uh, problems that we mentioned earlier tend to be more, um, I guess I will just say they're more prevalent. I want to mention that um, there's a really nice website that I saw today. Uh, a young lady, she's uh, 25 years old, African-American, and her name, and I'm going to give her credit because her name is Danielle Coke, like the Coca-Cola, but Danielle Coke. And Danielle has an Instagram page that I will refer you to that has done the best job of explaining this to, that I've ever seen. I'm not going to um, try to come up with my own way of explaining it because she put it all in a picture. 
And I would like to get that up for them at some point before we get off as well. The thing, the thing about it is um, if you are African-American and you have issues that are inherently uh, a problem in terms of having systemic racism, um, and then you have impoverished African-Americans, like I said, not all of us. And so I don't want people to think that, you know, we are all poor, we're not. But when you think about the way that we look at it, um, here we are, I wanna share this. Um, systemic racism can lead to inequities, right? That affect um, black people, which can lead to mass incarceration which can lead to lack of access to healthcare, which can lead to barriers to employment, which can lead to education disparities, high poverty rates and housing discrimination. I did not think about how all of that leads to more COVID, but if you've got a problem with housing, you've got more black people crowded together in urban areas, it's harder to do social distancing. Mm -hmm. If we're in high poverty areas, you might be in crowded living areas. You may have to take public transportation. You might have less clean water and less disinfectants. Okay, what about high, what about your educational disparities? What internet technology difficulties, less access to resources, barriers to employment. So you may work more essential roles. The essential workers, well, you know, a lot of them are minorities. There are higher rates of employment. And then if you have lack of access to healthcare, some of this is systemic racism, it's harder for you to get to treatment. That's why I said, if you're privileged to have a doctor's appointment, go take care of yourself. Use that money for what you need to use it for. Um, sometimes though we have, uh, we can't get tested, okay? Despite what has been <coughs> said, it's hard to get a test. Uh, you may have chronic illnesses, your risk is higher. And um, this last point I will make, unfortunately we have a mass incarceration problem in this country, which is gonna give you um, the lack of social distancing and the lack of cleaning products and overcrowding again. So some of these things are why African-Americans have been hit so hard. The essential workers, don't get to work from home. I nope. can't, you know, I can't go home and work. Now I told you I'm privileged. My husband is privileged. We have been working from home since the middle of March. Okay, a lot of African-Americans can, Indeed. right? But a lot of us can't. And so in that case, do what you can for yourself. If you can work from home, by all means do it. If you can save money along the way, so that a rainy day does not put you in prison. I think I heard T.D. Jake said, some of us are two paychecks away from jail. No, we, are, we shouldn't have to live like that, right? Save some money, don't spend all your money. Um, my husband, African-American at 25, he said, honey, I'm going somewhere, it's go with me in five years. Uh, just, I got a five-year plan. He didn't want me to spend money and I was angry. But that wise man, that wise man at, at that young age saved my life because like I think Dave Ramsey that does financial peace, he said, Leave, live like somebody, nobody else right now so that one day you can live like nobody else. That living that way where you're living uh, beneath your means will allow you to be able to pay off your house allow you to be able to go to the doctor, take care of yourself, take some peaceful trips. Okay, so I, I'm into the financial realm now, but I'll, I'll leave that for now and just say, um, that's what happened to us as African-Americans. That's, and not only just us, but that was my question and that's why I'm, I'm saying that. So God bless everyone. Thank you so much, Nurse Hendricks. And if you all have been paying attention, you have noticed that this is a trickle down. These things are connected. 
Mental stress leads to physical ailments, physical stress. And we're going to go to an attorney now. Sometimes when you're dealing with financial stress, it goes back to making you physically sick. So all of these things are tying together. Please take note. She gave us some great insight on what we can do. Um, and as Dr. Wood said earlier, pray and meditate, but we also have to do things on the natural side. And taking care of yourself on the natural side will make you a better person for the kingdom. So we have to do all of these things in order to be great for God. Um, take care of yourself mentally, take care of yourself physically. And now we're going to find out how we can take care of ourselves financially, as well as how to handle situations that may arise because of racial injustice. So our next panelist that I I would like to introduce is attorney Charity Gilchrist Davis. She is the founder and owner of the Gilchrist Davis Law Office LLC in Birmingham, Alabama. She's the founder and owner. That means she's the boss. Um, in 2017 and 18, she was listed among the super lawyers and is a member of the Birmingham and American Inns of Court, the Jefferson County Task Force, the Jefferson County Family Court Adolescent Mentoring Program. So we are welcoming attorney Gilchrist Davis. We are so glad to have you. She's going to touch on financial stress, but we also have some questions about um, how to handle maybe those legal situations that come up because of COVID or because of racial injustice. So welcome, Attorney Gilchrist Davis. Um, I just want to jump right into it with you. We're having a great discussion, and I know that you are going to just join in, and I believe these things are going to start connecting all the way around, and we're going to have a full circle when we are finished. Um, our first question for you is, with all the unrest in America due to COVID-19 and racial injustice, have you seen an increase and the number of people that are seeking legal services as a result of maybe job loss, foreclosures, bankruptcy, or even misrepresentation in the legal system or mis uh, mistreatment? Have you seen an increase in people seeking legal services because of all those things that we're dealing with right now? Welcome, Attorney Davis. Thank you. I am so happy to be here tonight. Um, and you know, everyone who has spoke before me um, I just feel overwhelmed. You guys have done such a great job. But to answer that question is absolutely. Um, with job loss, as we all know, right now, we are right about, we're right at maybe 20 million people who have lost jobs since March 17, 2020, when the pandemic started. And roughly about 1.3 million people a week are applying for unemployment benefits. So there is an increase in job loss. Also, I was reading an article today and it said about, about 10 million people before the end of the year will lose their health insurance. So we're mm. in a real, real serious crisis. We really are. As far as um, foreclosures, I don't practice in the bankruptcy end anymore. I stopped doing that probably in 2017. However, I have been receiving a lot of calls about what am I going to do? Um, because now I can't pay my house note. Here's mm. what has happened. A lot of times when the pandemic first started, um, you know, and I went and I, I did a, a, a virtual seminar with the pastor, I think it was back in March. And at that time, um, it was just, the pandemic was fresh. So companies were offering people foreclosure I mean, I'm sorry, forbearances to stop mm -hmm. any kind of foreclosures. They were offering you deferments on your credit cards. And it all sounded really, really good at, you know, initially. Everybody was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. Well, here's the problem. A lot of times we were not reading the fine print. So a lot, so you were, you were saying, okay, I will sign up for this. I'm going to go ahead and get this forbearance, meaning I'm going to push these payments off. But there was a stipulation that a lot of people did not read. A lot of times, most mortgage companies were making those payments due within. So if they deferred you for 90 days, at the end of those 90 days, they wanted all of the money. Uh, it was a very few of them were saying, we're going to defer this to the end of your loan. So now people are calling because 
I didn't have the money in month one. I didn't have it in month two. I didn't have it in month three. I took the forbearance. I didn't pay my bills. Now they want all of the money, which is driving people into bankruptcies and foreclosures. Now, so when I had the call and I had a call this week and said, um, Ms. Davis, what should I do? The first thing I would do is to go back to my mortgage company. I would go back to my mortgage company and I would ask them for a modification. A modification usually have all of your mortgage payments, the late payments, you're gonna pay them on the back end of the loan. That is one of the first things you wanna do. If that doesn't work, then you need to reach out to a bankruptcy lawyer to, to try to stop the foreclosure. Bankruptcy protects, a chapter 13 case can possibly protect you from getting that foreclosure on your credit or from losing your house. So I would suggest you reach out immediately. Don't wait until it happens and say, oops, you know, I should have done this, I should have done that. At this stage, if your mortgage company will not work with you with the modification, go ahead and reach out to a bankruptcy lawyer. On the next end, you asked about misrepresentation in the legal system. I'm not really, I can't really say that because again, I'm a lawyer and I know my colleagues are out here working hard. I um, basically, I'm in my office three, sometimes three days, five days a week. I've been going since the pandemic. We've had about three people. I'm in a multi complex building. We've had about, I know three to four cases in that building. So I have to be extremely safe, but I do know that people still need me in my area. So I have to go to work. So with that being said, I don't think there's been a lot of misrepresentation. What I have seen happen is that the courts have slowed down so, it, it's very slow. It's very hard for you to get a court date. Um, you know, unless it's a criminal case or an emergency case, you basically will not be allowed to go to court. Alabama Supreme Court issued an order back in March and it has constantly been extended. And I think the last extension was maybe like in June and then they left it up to your local courts where it, unless it's an emergency situation, you cannot come to court and in-person court. So a lot of times what we're doing is Zoom meetings, but we're moving the cases along. So I don't think there's been any kind of misrepresentation. I think you know people may be frustrated because they cannot get into the court system. Um, a lot of the judges are working from home so that, you know, they will have you on a Zoom conference. However, I've had one in-person hearing about two weeks ago and I have a trial and I chose to go in-person because it's a very serious situation. And I would like for the judge to see the demeanor of my client. And that is something when I think about misrepresentation, I will say this, as a lawyer, I tell my clients, if you really want the court to connect with you, the judge, you need to have an in-person hearing, which means it will probably be me, you, and our witnesses, and we're gonna social distance. But that, when, when dealing with misrepresentation, I think of it like this, how will the judge, how will my client come across to a judge that can't see the person's demeanor? They don't know you, they can't really see, they're looking at you on, on a screen, they don't see your emotions, they may not get a good view, Zoom may go off. So with those things happening, um, I don't think the system is causing the misrepresentation. I think what is going on is that we're just trying to cope with what is going on with the country. And I think the courts are doing the best they can. As far as the um, mistreatment by law enforcement, I think Dr. Chris touched on that um, earlier when he talked about George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Rayshard Brooks, Amar Aubrey, all of those different things we've seen just basically since COVID-19, we all know we're suffering, you know, racial injustice with black people in this country. However, as black Americans, let me just say something. And I, this happened um, recently, a young person reached out to me and I don't do criminal law. So I'm gonna just touch on this just as, a per, as an experience that someone said, and I just wanna help someone out. First of all, we know we're in a pandemic. We're, we're in two pandemics. We're in a pandemic that deals with COVID-19 and we're in a pandemic that deals with racial injustice. Now, how should we behave as black Americans? We should not, we have rights. The first amendment gives us the right to protest, free speech, but we should not go out and incite anger. We should not go out 
and knock down Confederate, you know, statues. Um, we should not, you know, do things to incite the injustice. Now, there's, there are some times when there's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes just like, you know, you're gonna get stopped by the police. And the first thing you can do to not incite or to, you know, have that situation explode is to remain calm. These are some of the things that I told this young person. I said, the first thing is, when an officer approach you, just simply, if he doesn't, he should first of all tell you, what is his name? what precinct he's from and why he's stopping you. But just in case he does not do that, simply don't get <laughs> intimidated. Don't get unruly, just remain calm. And if he asks you for your license, give him your license and then ask him, what are you stopping me for? At that point, he's going to tell you or he'll tell you, I'll be right back. He's gonna run your license and then he'll, he'll come and tell you. Don't resist arrest. A lot of times what we don't understand at the end of the day, being African-American, our goal is to get home. That's your number one goal is to get home. So when you're out and when you're experiencing mistreatment by law enforcement, the first thing you need to think of, how can I get home? And the number one thing I think about is how am I going to respond? And responding intelligently, meaning being calm, not, you know, mouthing off, you know, because you do have rights. Your rights after the stop is <laughs> the officer stops you and he gives you the ticket or whatever he does. If he has mistreated you, let's, I just want to say this and I'm going to move on. There are some things you can do. The first thing you can do is immediately contact that police force and tell them that you would like to file a complaint, whether there is an informal complaint or a formal complaint. There are two types that you can file. Informal, meaning they will take down the statement. You don't have to basically try to bring any kind of charges against the officer, but you want the police department to investigate it. Somebody that's superior to him will investigate those charges. A lot of times they will go up to internal affairs. That's where a neutral person will look at the charges and say, well, maybe the officer acted improperly. Then if you're not satisfied with that, you can always go to what is called Alabama law enforcement. It's a-L-E-A, -E you can always file a complaint with them. You have, I think it's about 180 days and they will investigate it. But what you always want to consider is, I need to get home. And getting home means remaining calm. And I'll mm. stop. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, and I really pay close attention to that because I have three black sons. Um, so I, you know, those are things that I have told my sons as well remain calm. I also tell them to, you know, we have this thing called Life 360. So I'm tracking everywhere they are so I can see it, you know, where they are. But thank you um, for explaining our rights. I don't think some people realize that you can file a complaint. They, you know, they go to social media and it, it's a powerful tool. Social media is a, is a powerful weapon, but they go to social media and they start posting, but we don't take the legal standpoint of filing the complaint filing informal and formal complaints so that it is somewhere um, legally that we were, you know, someone was mistreated or mishandled. And then as far as um, giving us the information about the financial, from the financial standpoint, really appreciate that. I know that there are people who may never say anything to anyone, but they are watching us. Guys, if you are watching on Facebook Live now, take down that information that she gave you about how to manage financially, how to manage with bills and who to contact and things that you need to do, take down that information as well as from the legal standpoint of the racial injustice, take down those things that you can do legally from a legal standpoint. Um, and I wanna say that in our comment section, we have some scribes behind the scene that I want to acknowledge. We have, um, to Linda Morris and Dr. Kayla Ward. They're behind the scenes with us on tonight and they are taking those questions and they're also posting information on our Facebook Live comments. So information that uh, Dr. Woods and Nurse Hendricks and Attorney Davis have spoken about links. They are in the comment section on our Facebook Live. They will also be on 
our Facebook page and Instagram and Twitter pages um, as well after this is over so that you can go back and click on those links and receive that information and you can receive information about these wonderful panelists as well. So look in the comment sections and also come back after this is over. We will post all of those links to give you that information. Um, can, I say so, can I say one more thing on those? Yes, two absolutely. Because I think it's very important and I didn't finish and I forgot them. As far as the officer, when you make a complaint, you can also ask law enforcement if the officer had on a body camera and you can view right. that. So that's an additional thing. You can view that. So, it's, so if you wanted to file a formal complaint, sometimes lead to you wanted to file a civil lawsuit against the officer or criminal charges. Before you do that, that's a sworn statement. And if you make a statement that's not true, they can come back and file charges on you. So you always want to ask them to let you see the body camera. That's one thing, in addition to filing whichever complaint you choose to file. On the financial side, um, I would just like to say, whenever you're asking for a forbearance or any kind of deferment, you want to always get it in writing. One thing I did not mention was when you call them up, make sure the line is being recorded. You're on a recorded line. Secondly, you want to recap the conversation with something in writing. Once you get something in writing, then you will know what they stated is true. And third, because that's always an understanding, always recap it in writing. Um, and if the agreement is something that you do not wish to do, go forward with making your monthly mortgage payments so that you will not have any problems in the future. And I think that's it. That was I'm great. I'm glad you came back and gave us the information because that is wonderful information. Um, I used to be a social worker and it was all about documentation. And even as an educator now, it's still all about documentation. What can you prove? What do you have? Um, so having that paper trail, um, emails and those things, recordings, those are great, uh, great things to have. So thank you for um, coming back with that. Um, I have one last question for you and then we're going to move on uh, to our final panelists. But um, do you know, and we can list these if you have them, we'll put that up, any programs or organizations that may provide pro bono legal services uh, for those who during this time may be unable to afford or pay for services? Absolutely. Um, let's start with, I'm in the Birmingham area and we have what is called Birmingham Legal Aid. Um, I did look at you guys. I think you're in Huntsville. You guys have Huntsville Legal Aid. You also have, we all have Legal Services Alabama and they service Huntsville and they also service um, Birmingham. We have something that's called Volunteer Lawyers Program where lawyers such as myself may maybe once a month or maybe once a year take one case and do pro bono work but you need to sign up in Birmingham through what is called the Volunteer Lawyers Program. Um, and then if you are suffering some kind of injustice and you can't find anybody in Alabama, I mean, in your local area, you can always go to the Southern Poverty Legal Center in Montgomery. And most of the time these offices handle stuff like domestic violence, I'm sorry, domestic violence, housing issues like unlawful detainers, uh, consumer protection, payday lending, predatory lending, defective vehicles, wage garnishments. Usually those are the services they provide. Sometimes family law issues with you know, the legal aid or legal service society or the Southern um, Poverty Law Center. Thank you so much. I hope you all out there in Facebook land and Zoom land are taking these notes down. Guys, this is great information. Once again, you may not know where to go or before this, maybe you didn't know where to go, but we are giving you all of the outlets that you need, mental, physical, financial, legal. We are giving it all to you tonight. And once again, we will have those um, links in our comment section as well as on our social media pages. So please come back if it was going a little too fast. You can just click on those links at your leisure and we will have everything there that you need. And if you can't see it, I can, but all of these things are tying together. If we can get all of these things worked out, we have balance. You have balance. If you're mentally stable, physically stable, financially stable, there is a balance there. So you need all of these things. And that brings us to our last panelist who is going to kind of wrap everything up for us 
tie everything together. Um, Dr. Darnell Diggs. Uh, Dr. Diggs is a research physicist and certified leadership coach. He's a leadership coach, so he can teach you how to be a leader, but I think he can also give you some life lessons, some life coaching in there as well. Uh, Dr. D is hails from the state of Alabama, and his educational credentials include the Alabama A&M University with a Bachelor of Science, a Master's, and a PhD degree, and he holds that in physics. So welcome, Dr. Diggs. On tonight, he is no stranger to the Fountain of Life CDC. He is one of our board members, so we are excited to have him. Um, I think he will be on next week as well, if I'm not mistaken, so you'll get to see him again with the young people. Welcome, Dr. Dix. Thank you so much. Um, I was, I really enjoyed what I've heard. And, and, and the first thing that just came to my mind was, you know, the power of knowledge. Yes. Um, and education. You know, education is not merely the impartation of knowledge. Education is also the communication of an experience to a race. And that's what has, has happened tonight. I was thinking about how powerful knowledge is. Well, not just knowledge. Knowledge alone, is, in, my, in my personal opinion, is not power. But knowledge applied in the proper context, now that's power. And, um, and I also believe that we can't, we can't, no one can live beyond their knowledge base. So. I certainly appreciate all of the um, the nuggets, the information that every panelist has offered. But I was thinking about it, you know, you know, when they, everybody was talking, you know, and even our host, um, Evangelist Young, was saying how everything is connected. I, I firmly believe that. And I also think that the church has a tremendous responsibility um, in this whole pandemic uh, scenario. And, 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 I, and I heard that uh, Attorney Gilchrist, I think she said there are two pandemics. I always say there are three. Um, she said, I, you know, I believe that there's the, the physical pand pandemic, the COVID-19, then we have, we have the societal and cultural pandemic as it relates to the race, racism and all different social ills. But we also have a spiritual pandemic, I believe, because God has, has done a, a divine disruption. He has shut down these churches, you know, and people are having to take prayer back into their homes. <laughs> so that's what I believe, you know, and I think that things are just changing. So having, you know, an, uh, an, uh, uh, an understanding of the times, the Bible says this, that uh, the children of Issachar, which were men, had an understanding of the times uh, to know um, what Israel ought to do. And I think that we need the children of Israel, children of Issachar to come forth so we can be accurately informed on how we should conduct ourselves in the midst of these pandemics. And I believe that is the church's responsibility. I believe that, you know, in the midst of everything that's going on, and I'm not trying to over-spiritualize anything, you know, everything that we did, we have a responsibility. We are citizens, you know, of heaven first. Paul said, my citizenship is in heaven, but we're also in this earth realm. And so I believe that we have a responsibility to always choose kingdom over culture. I believe that. I believe that we have a responsibility to understand what God requires as it relates to our physical temples, as uh, Nurse uh, Rochelle Hendricks was saying. We have a responsibility. And, I, and when you were talking, like talking, um, uh, Rochelle, uh, Rochelle, I was like, oh my God, because I just um, ate some cake and pizza, and I know I should <laughs> all those <laughs> that type of stuff. But we do have a responsibility to take care of our, our temples and everything that we need. You know, um, like the, uh, the chaplain said, we got to pray, we got to meditate, and I just think that self awareness is critical. You know, to uh, leading a peaceful life. You know, knowing how to, you know understanding your 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 emotions you know and what the, and what and what hidden messages these emo these emotions are telling you because they're telling you something right and so how to how to manage those emotions so you could be emotionally intelligent and so you know how to you know govern yourselves accordingly you know and not allow these these things to overtake you we as citizens of the kingdom of god do not have to allow life circumstances and issues to overtake us we don't we have um, a greater access to a greater source that can, if we just choose to condition ourselves in the things of the spirit. And I, and I do believe that, I'm, I mean, spiritual conditioning like, like society does. The reason why people have these issues uh, like, you know, um, 
racial supremacy, white supremacy, white privilege, is that is that they have been conditioned to believe that. I mean, to, it's, it's, it has become an integral part of who they are. So it's like natural, almost automatic, you know, that they believe these this this farce, this fallacy, this, these lies. And so I think that we, as Christians, as believers, we should also condition ourselves in the things of God, you know, like, you know, just like a, a napkin. If you have a napkin, you have a dry napkin and a wet napkin, you know, if you if you wet the napkin, it becomes, the water becomes, you know, an integral part of the napkin. And so it is when we read the word of God, and we soak up the word of God, you know, we, we become an integral, the word becomes an integral part of who we are. And, and when we do that, we're changed. We're still a napkin, but we're a wet napkin. And you can see that visible change if you have, you know, soaked in the presence of God, soaked in the things of God, and um, and then began to demonstrate that in the earth. Because the world is looking for the church, you know, for an answer. My question is, how should we respond? And so I appreciate all of the panelists that have given their thoughts. You know, first of all, not, you know, um, the Bible says that I, that my people perish for the lack of knowledge. In other words, it says my people perish for being ignorant. I mean, that's simply what it is. I mean, if you talk about a thug, ignorance is a thug. Ignorance is gangster-like. I mean, ignorance is oftentimes says will, will rob you of the abundance mentality. That's why it's, it's critically important that we study, that we pay attention to information, that we be accurately, accurately informed to know how to navigate this, this, this landscape that we're currently in. And so these panelists have provided us with a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of information, but it's great to just hear it. We have to apply what we hear, we have to apply it. And so if you don't apply it, we won't get, the, won't get any results, right? We want to get the results that God intended. We want to get positive results. We want that state of peace. We want a healthy body, healthy mindset. We want to live beneath our means, amen. Come on, we need. We want to live beneath our means, so we have to stop all this this spending unnecessarily, as as um, Rochelle said and others have said. You know, we just have to be disciplined, be diligent, as the scripture says, be diligent to know the state of thy flock. In other words, know what you possess, know what you have, know what you can can and cannot afford, and those things, you know, will, will eliminate a lot of the stress that we have. And so, just I think. I think that the key ingredient for me that I take away from this, this whole talk is to be, you know, be mindful of what's, um, of, you know, being mindful of who I am, what I have, what I have access to, and what I'm able to do, and then accept that. And I think if you just accept that and be content in the things of God, then you will live a life of peace. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, I agree with all of that, Dr. Diggs. As you can see tonight, and I will say it again, please, you have the experts here. Please don't go scrolling through Facebook and Instagram and Twitter looking for advice and medical diagnoses and um, psychologists and counselors. Please don't scroll through looking for that advice, you have it right here. And it will be on our Fountain of Life CDC page. It will remain there for you to go back and listen. We will have those links there. Our panelists have done a wonderful job on tonight. And so we are so thankful that um, Pastor Strong had this vision to help. He, he's all about helping the community. That is what Fountain of Life CDC is all about. I'm so grateful that he had this vision to have this um, Facebook Live, this Zoom uh, meeting where you could receive information, quality information, um, natural and spiritual information that you can trust is the right information. You have received mental, physical, financial, and legal, and spiritual. Take every nugget that you heard on tonight, write it down, go back and listen in your leisure time so that you can write down the things that you need. 
And what, like I said, we are appreciative of our panelists because they are also going to answer some more questions um, in the near future, hopefully. We know that they're very busy, but hopefully they'll answer some questions and record themselves and we will post those videos so that you can have more information as we all navigate through this time. Because we know that although we're navigating and we can't really see it right now, if you follow the instructions, we'll get to where we're going. Um, follow the instructions, we'll get to where we're going. So thank you once again to Dr. Frederick Woods. Thank you to Nurse Hendricks. Thank you, Attorney Gilchrist Davis. Thank you, Dr. Diggs. We truly appreciate you for taking the time out to share legitimate quality knowledge and information with us on tonight. I am going to turn it over. It has been my pleasure <coughs> to be your co-host. I'm Alicia Young, um, proud member of the Fountain of Life Ministries and Fountain of Life CDC. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. James Strong for our closing remarks and anything that he has to say. It has been my pleasure. Once again, those questions in the comments, I think we had one. It was more of a personal question. So if that person is still watching, I will ask that question to Nurse Hendricks off the Zoom and I will personally inbox you the answer to that question with, um, with some, she was asking about some doctors. I will send those to you in your inbox if you're still watching um, right now. So thank you for your questions and turn it over to Dr. Strong. Thank you, Evangelist Young. And I wanna say thank you to the panelists. All have done a wonderful job uh, as, as you all uh, gave out wonderful information tonight. I thought about what Solomon said in uh, Proverbs chapter four, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline for the words of the, my mouth. Then he said in verse seven, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom and with all that getting, get an understanding. That's what we're trying to uh, uh, do tonight is share with our uh, viewing audience some wisdom with understanding. It's, 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 a, it's uh, sad to know something, but you don't know how to apply it. Even as uh, Attorney Davis was talking, uh, uh, dealing with uh, foreclosure, uh, it's so, you need to understand, it's, it's three different ones. You need to understand which one you have to deal with you, if you're in a situation where you need to. Uh, apply for foreclosure. Uh, just experienced a young lady had gone through a foreclosure and she's um, now uh, trying to get another apartment in a, a living uh, uh, space and she can't get it. You know why? Because she got a foreclosure sitting up there. Every time they uh, she fell an application, that's going to pop up and she can't, she can't want about to take a chance on it. So you, so you need to understand what you're doing before you do it. And I, I just want to thank everybody. And uh, I hope we have been uh, benefit, uh, beneficial and been a benefit to people that are listening tonight. And uh, uh, when I first, when I first uh, thought about this, I began to talk to uh, Dr. Ward and, and we just kind of, our minds just went everywhere and we just wanted to come on uh, because a lot is going on during this uh, COVID-19 and we want to share some, some valuable information to, to the listeners that are gonna help them. Uh, and we, you know, we're gonna get through COVID-19. We're gonna survive COVID-19. We're gonna get through it. And when we come through it, we're gonna be a better people because you know why? I think we're gonna equip ourselves uh, a little bit better next time because uh, this is not the last pandemic going to hit us. It's, it's some most things going to happen, and I, I do believe that uh, uh, this COVID nineteen, uh, I believe, is a God thing. We're trying to get uh, people's attention. Um, when you look in scripture, you don't see uh, the devil sending no plagues, uh, plagues, plagues, and stuff that come from God. Devil don't send plagues. So, so I believe God got, got, a, got a purpose in for what he has allowed to come this way. So thank you again tonight. Thank you all for your time. You didn't have to give up your time. All of you are valuable individuals. 
uh, and your time is valuable. And so I want to thank you. Thank you, uh, Trina Davis. Thank you, uh, Nurse uh, Henricks. Thank you, Dr. Diggs. Uh, Dr. Wood, thank you. Um, and um, don't be surprised somewhere don't, along the line, uh, we're calling you all again for something. Amen. Because we want to be a blessing to our community. I love you. God bless you. Is my prayer. Well, uh, Sister Young, if you're still on. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we might well close it out then. All right, guys, this has been The Breaking Point, how to deal with mental, physical, and financial stress, and we tied it in because we are kingdom-minded. We tied it in with spiritual, how to handle all of these things. Thank you for joining us. Come back again on next Tuesday. We will have Let's Talk About It with our young people and our young adults. Please make sure that your young adults from ages 10 all the way up to 25 are joining us on next week because we will have information they're dealing with this just like we are so make sure that your kids are on it'll be in the same location we will put those flyers out there join us again on next week with our host elder jamel strong and a wonderful group of panelists who will talk about it with our young people have a great night everyone god bless you Good night.